We welcome you to worship today, and as we do so, we acknowledge that Calvary United Church stands on Treaty 6 territory. We pay our respects to our elders, both past and present, wherever we find ourselves this morning. We recommit to our status as an affirming ministry within the United Church of Canada and strive to be an open-minded, inclusive, and welcoming place of worship. It is our deepest hope that all people might feel at home in this space, and we give thanks to God for this Sabbath day where we join our hearts and minds in prayer. We gather today proclaiming God's love and seeking God's blessing. We gather to worship God, who loves us with an immeasurable love. Here we remember that God is with us always, even when we are unaware, unfocused, and unintentional. Here, we proclaim our gratitude for this church and the ministry we share, as together we seek ways to generously live out our love and our faith. So, let us turn our hearts to prayer, our minds to worship, and our hands to ministry, as together we praise God's name. Generous God, giver of every good and perfect gift, we join our voices today to express our thanks and praise. We thank you for health and safety, for family and friends, for our homes and this church community. We know that we can get caught up in feeling powerless, fearful, and uncertain. When these things move in, our sense of scarcity moves in as well and binds our hearts. Sometimes it is hard to see the blessings that surround us and the abundance that you provide. Forgive us, we pray, when generosity is not our default and help us to respond to what you have provided for us by generously sharing those blessings with others. Hear our prayers now, God of life, these things that we wish to confess, that we might lay them before you in hope and honesty. God's love, which knows no bounds, frees us and empowers us to share that love with others. As we sing God's praises today, may we be deeply aware of the abundance God showers upon us. This we pray in God's holy name. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Children's Time. This week, what we are going to be talking about during the whole service, not just here at Children's Time, is something called stewardship. Now, you may have heard the word stewardship before, but if you don't know what it means, that's okay. Stewardship is when we have a job 
to look after things and help people with things, we can have lots of different types of stewardship. There's stewardship to the environment, where we can do a big job of helping keep the environment really healthy and really clean and really safe. We can be stewards to other people. We can help with the homeless. We can help with people in our community. We can help our family. There's stewardship to our church. We're all called to be stewards within our church by Jesus. So Jesus said, and God said, that we need to work together to make this community all that we know it can be. A place of love, a place of acceptance, a place that we can all come. So that's stewardship. Now, we're going to switch gears a little bit, and I'm going to show you what I have this week. And we're going to do a stewardship is like. So stewardship is like this. Now these, if you don't know what they are, they are sea glass. So when we think of glass, usually what we think of is something that we don't want to touch too much, right? We don't want to touch glass because it's sharp and it's a little bit dangerous and it could hurt us, right? But this, well, it's not sharp. It's not dangerous at all. It doesn't even really look like glass, does it? it kind of looks like a rock. So what's happened to this glass is that it's been in the water for a very long time. And what happens to sea glass over a very long time is that it rolls around and it moves all around and it gets rubbed against the sand and it gets rubbed against raw the rocks and other pieces of glass and that sort of thing. And it takes away all the sharp edges and all the roughness and also it kind of takes away the see-throughness of it. I can see the light of the candle through it. I can see the light of the sun through it. But it's not the same as another piece of glass, right? So it's changed from the piece of glass we think of that we don't want to touch, that we want to leave alone, that we, you know, would throw in the garbage and not think about anymore. Maybe a bottle broke or a light bulb broke or something like that. We wouldn't want to touch that. But this, when you come across this on the beach, you go, ha! Huh, look at that really cool piece of sea glass that I found. I want to take that home. People make necklaces out of these things. I have a whole jar of this stuff from when I went to the ocean because they're beautiful and they're meaningful and they're special. So stewardship is like a piece of sea glass. You may ask me how is stewardship, so taking care of things and helping people like a piece of sea glass. Well, if we think about the stewards in our crowd, so, like I said, Jesus has called every single one of us to be a steward. We all start out kind of like a regular piece of glass. But over time, if we do the things that help our communities, help our environment, help our church, all those really good things, if we do stewardship, Every time we do an action like that, that we're kind and we're caring and we have a thought to think, hmm, how could I help somebody else? That's like the sea glass getting rubbed against the sand. Over time, it becomes this beautiful, wonderful thing. And sure, it can take some time and that's okay. And I'm not trying to say that you were like dangerous or something like that when you start out, not saying that at all. But what we end up like is like a piece of sea glass. When we're good stewards to our communities, to our families, to our church, to the environment, we end up beautiful and shiny and something that somebody wants to be around all the time. It's all those good things. So if you hear the rest of the service that we're talking about stewardship, and you don't quite know what that means. Just think about the piece of sea glass, how it's a really, really beautiful thing. And that's what stewardship's like. So maybe you want to go out and do that. Try really hard to do that for us, for everybody, for Jesus. All right, my friends, let us end our time together in prayer. Powerful and loving God, thank you for our call to stewardship, our mission to help people, to help our community, to help our church, and help our environment. Help us be like the sea glass. 
Help us be like these beautiful pieces of glass that we find along the water's edge that are treasures. Help us remember that sometimes it takes practice and it takes time to turn out like a piece of sea glass. In your name. Amen. Today's reading is John 21, verses 15 to 19. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go to wherever you wished. But when we grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. So ends our reading. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every heart be acceptable unto you, O God, our Creator and Redeemer. Amen. I read a story once about a farmer who one warm summer night found himself sitting on the front porch with his wife. The couple had been together for over 40 years. There had been highs and lows, good times and bad. You know how it goes. Sometimes it's a bumper crop, sometimes it's a bust. But on this particular night, the farmer began to think about how much he appreciated his wife. They had shared so much together and through it all, she had been caring, supportive, patient and forgiving. Overcome with emotion, he turned to her and said, wife, you have been such a wonderful partner all these years that there are times I can hardly keep myself from telling you. Love and gratitude are wonderful emotions, particularly so when we don't keep them to ourselves. Simple phrases like, thank you, I appreciate that, I appreciate you, are powerful and transformative. These words have the potential to grow and enhance our love and strengthen our relationships. Consequently, to not express these feelings is a lost opportunity. It's a bit sad, really, to think that for most of us, we sometimes act like the farmer in our story and we don't take the time to express our love and gratitude to those in our lives. Even as a church community, we don't always say it enough. To be clear, it isn't that we don't love one another, it isn't that we don't appreciate each other and what we do for God's mission here at Calvary, it's just that years kind of go by and we forget to say thank you. Perhaps this is one of the blessings of COVID. In these seemingly endless pandemic months, I have found that I've come to understand just how deeply I appreciate all of you. There is no way I would have made it through any of what this year and a half has held without all of your support. The kind words, phone calls, thoughtful notes, prayers, They've meant the world to me. And I do hope that there have been times when you have felt a surge of courage, knowing that you are in my constant, never-ending thoughts and prayers. We'll make it through all of this, I know it. With God's grace and a bit of courage, we'll make it through. And I have a feeling that expressing gratitude in our words and our actions will play an important role and how we as a church family and our wider community will cope with and eventually recover from all of this. 
There are many studies, of course, that show how focusing on our abundance and expressing our gratitude regularly, but especially in times of stress and trauma, make us happier and healthier as individuals and stronger as a community. Being mindful and intentional in expressing gratitude changes our perspective and moves us towards a healthier state of being. Melody Beattie wrote, gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos to order, confusion to clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. So the bottom line is, say thank you and say it often to those people who you know and love and interact with every single day. Say thank you to those people you don't really know, but who impact you anyway. The person who pumps your gas, or the person who checks through your groceries, or the total stranger who lets you change lanes when the traffic is heavy and you're already so late to pick up the kids. It's important to say thank you, but it's equally important to show our gratitude. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but I've been finding that lately folk are feeling a bit, well, discouraged. While focusing on our gratitude and expressing it out loud is necessary, we all know that it can't end there. In order to really have an impact on others and help ease the discouragement we see in those around us, love and gratitude must be lived out. They must be expressed through our actions. Naturally, Jesus had something to say about all of this. When asked once what God expected of a believer, Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, none of this would have been new to Jesus' friends and followers. He was literally quoting scripture that they'd all heard before. What was new was the way he linked love of God to love of neighbor. That was new, really new. Essentially, what he was saying to the people was this. You want to express your love to God? Then love each other. <laughs> love your neighbor. You want to express your sincere gratitude for all that God has done for and given you? Then reach out to those around you. Take your place within the community and make it better. Care for the people in your life. In today's lesson from John's Gospel, we hear a similar message. Jesus is speaking directly to Peter this time. It takes place after the resurrection, and Peter has found himself a bit more excitable than usual, even for him. But his reaction does seem justified. He is confused about what has happened, he's unsure of what is supposed to happen now, and he is overwhelmed by uncertainty of what lies ahead. Basically, he's pretty much feeling the way we're all feeling right now. Life just isn't the same, and it's really hard to know what to say or do when everything looks and feels different and unfamiliar. All Peter seems to know for sure is that Jesus is about to leave, and it scares him. For his part, Jesus wants to ensure that the disciples understand the mission he's leaving for them. He needs them to know that it is vitally important that this next phase of their life is going to need more than their words or lip service. It's going to take more than a great sermon for the resurrection to mean anything. For it to accomplish anything real and life-altering, it will need the actions and abundant generosity of those who believe. And so Jesus asks Peter not once, not twice, but three times, do you love me? And each time Peter says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Of course I love you. But Jesus wants Peter to do more than use words to express his love. He wants Peter to show him. And so he says, Peter, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. In other words, if Peter wants to express his love for Christ, he is going to have to abundantly love and serve and care for those whom Jesus loves. Just like Peter, we are called to show our love through our actions and the ways we live out our faith in the world. This includes how we spend our time, how we use our words, and 
how we go about sharing our resources to make a difference in the world. I have, since the very first day I joined Calvary United, been astounded by the ways the members of this congregation give of your time, your energy, and your finances to ensure that this church remains the vital part of our community that it has been for generations. These past 19 months, well, you've shown even more how important this faith community is and how dedicated we all are to it. I know that there are those who have come to rely on these online services, both regular attenders and those who live a, live a little farther away. Hello, Scotland. <laughs> In spite of my poor attempt at being a televangelist, I do hope that they have, in their own way, helped us feel connected to each other in these peculiar times. I am thankful that so many have found us, and I hope you have found peace and comfort while you've lingered here. Each week, during in-person church, we take a moment to bless our offering and dedicate it to the work of God. While I suppose it's likely of one of those moments during the service where most of us take a quick peek at our phones, I mean, it's not the most riveting part, and talking about money tends to make people feel uncomfortable. But the truth is, it is an important part of our worship. For in acknowledging what we have been offered, we are saying thank you. Thank you, God, for the abundant gifts we have received. And we are showing our love and gratitude through the act of a thoughtful donation one that helps us as a church to live out our mission to love and serve and care for those whom Jesus loves. I truly believe that stewardship is more than what we put in the plate on Sunday morning. And I know that the pandemic has been financially challenging for many of us. It has been for the church as well. And it is really important to me and to our church council that everyone who calls Calvary home knows that donating is not a prerequisite for attending. If, however, you find yourself with the means, we would greatly appreciate your monetary support of this ministry as we continue to seek out ways to share God's love in the world during these challenging times. Jesus needed the disciples to live out their faith in real and generous ways. By their actions, the love God showered upon the world through the resurrection reached into the lives of ordinary people and changed everything. Today, the need is the same. God's love still needs us. God still needs people like you and me to show others God's love and care. It is our calling as followers of Christ in grateful response to God's love and abundance, we are called to be nothing less than the hands and feet of Christ, living out our faith, showing our gratitude in word and action, and walking this road together, guided by God as we go. Amen.
Creating God, we thank you for the gift that is life, for the changing seasons, for the tiny seeds that in your holy mystery become life-sustaining food, cleansed air, beauty to behold, and life itself. Loving God, we thank you for the gift of family, friends, and community those who know us so well that they know when to hold our hand and when it is time to let go. We thank you for those people who journey with us in our times of joy and especially in our times of sorrow. Compassionate God, we thank you for holding us in troubling times. We pray for those who are journeying through illness, awaiting medical diagnosis, those with life-threatening and degenerative diseases. We know that we do not journey alone, but that you are always with us. Challenging God, we thank you for writing your law upon our hearts so that we are called to seek justice and to love kindness. Thank you for moving us to action and challenging us to be your hands and your feet in a world in desperate need of healing. God of all time and place, we thank you for the gifts of love, compassion, life, and challenge. Help us to know that each small individual action together with another's can make a difference to the world and make a world of difference. May your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Let us join our hearts, minds, and voices together as we pray the prayer our Savior taught calling you by whatever name feels most like home to us this day, we pray. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the love of God course through our veins. May the goodness of Christ pulse through our bodies. May the power of the Spirit flow through our souls. 
May the wonder of God, the abundant giver, resonate through our minds, that we might live and serve and give abundantly ourselves until we gather again in peace. And all God's people said, Amen.